Okay, the next step is going to be laying down our markers so that we can analyze the data in a specific region and automate the extraction. Now, we have an issue in that, um, as we mentioned in the earlier video, there are there is not just one marker for startle. So if we zoom in here on the startle response, let's scroll over, or the startle probe. We can see that there's an initial onset marker and then the actual startle, startle probe, which was initiated right here, has three more pulses. Again, this was for a different piece of equipment that we are sending in tandem the startle pulse to. So we've got to find a way to just indicate that the one startle probe was administered so that we can extract the startle data. Okay, so now I'm going to lay down some events so that I can capture and extract just each startle. And the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to zoom out so we can see a whole startle, an initiation of a picture and a startle. Let's zoom a little bit more out. Okay, so you can see the, the whole presentation of a picture on, picture off. Again, we want to ignore this first blip, the end blip. We just want an initiation of startle. So what we're going to do is create some events. And how we do this is we're going to go to Find Cycle. Now, I already have this set up, so this might be confusing. Just ignore this highlight. Basically, we want to say peaks. We're going to do it relative to the picture onset. So we're actually going to select picture onset uh, for our reference point. Look for an upward positive. We're going to put this at 3 volts. And this is a bit arbitrary because we see the picture voltage is at, at about 5 volts. But 3 will do what we need. Now this next part we do is selection. Now the reason I'm doing two seconds is I want to go uh, far along enough past the picture onset set that it ignores this initial blip on the startle probe. And I know all of my startle probes are between 3.5 to 4.5 seconds, so if I do a 2 and a 5 for my selection, I'm just capturing my startle probe and those three blips that we're worried about. But what we can do now, let's move the cursor to the origin, so that means just back to the beginning, so it selects everything. And we're going to say, under our output, keep this checked, that says paste measurements for each uh, cycle into the journal, that's just our record. And we're going to also want to say, create some events, make sure this is selected for output events. We're going to put this at maximum, look for the highest point. Now we're going to startle probe channel that we're laying down our probe. We're doing it in reference under the measurements, I'm sorry, under the cycles to picture presentation. But now we're going to lay down our events relative to our startle probe. We're going to select to lay down a stimulus delivery. And that's just classifying what this event is that we're creating. And our output channel is going to be on Startle Probe as well. I just put a little X there. And this can be a little finicky. So once you run it, you may see that it doesn't capture all of them, or it gives you an error and says zero cycles. It most likely just means you have to scroll back to the beginning and click somewhere in the graph. If you're having trouble clicking somewhere in the graph, make sure that you've selected this uh, cursor button here. So let's see if we can get this to go. We're going to say find all cycles. Because I had 10 habituation and 48 images, we should see in our journal now, when we scroll to the bottom, that a grand total of 58 cycles were found. So we know it found every startle, which is perfect. Now what I can do is I can actually click this little tiny button here to show me where my events are. And I can actually just click on an event and see where that first event is. Now the the next part of what we need to do is we need to classify how long our event, uh, at what point in time we're going to consider this 
a reflexive startle response versus a natural blink or a non-startle. The literature indicates 150 milliseconds post-startle probe onset. I think that's a little too conservative. I typically see good startle responses at about 200 milliseconds. Either way, it doesn't look like my marker went at the very beginning of the startle probe. So I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to go to one of the probes. I can actually just click on it now since I've created these. Here's my first one. And I can see it's, it's lining up at the very ending, the very end of this triple blip. And I want to make sure it's consistent with all of my tracks I laid down. And yeah, it looks like it's at the exact same place at the very end. So as long as we're consistent, we can actually use this. Um, the benefit of doing this method is that it's also going to lay down a marker when there's a non-startle. So this first presentation didn't have a startle probe, but so when we're comparing it to our data, it can get a little confusing because it's not counting a trial that was non-startle. But this will allow us to actually count them. So let's go back to the beginning. And we want to think, how are we going to, how far are we going to define this next part? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my cursor. I know this should be 50 milliseconds. I can actually select and go over my original probe. And I can see delta T, which is how much time have I selected. It's just about at 50 milliseconds, so I know we're good. Now from this probe onset, I've read that it's about 150 milliseconds you should go out. And you can even see on this person at 150 milliseconds, it's really not capturing what we need. Regardless, this marker is being laid down after the startle probe. So I'm going to look and see about how far, you know this is a natural startle probe, how far do I have to go out? from this startle, from where I know where all my markers are, in order to capture all my reflexive startle. And I can see that it's just shy of 200 milliseconds. And again, I'm looking at my delta T. So now I'm going to use that value. I'm going to say 200 milliseconds. Now, we're going to manually check each one of these after it extracts it. So I feel a little bit more comfortable just saying, go out 200 milliseconds. We're going to go in each one and verify that it's correct and delete trials that are bad. Boop. Okay, now I have the next section lined up. Caleb's trying not to laugh. Now I have the next section lined up. I've got my events set up correctly. Now I can actually automate extracting this startle EMG data, but part of what I'm going to do, just going to have to trust me is I've got to set up my calculation channels here to get what I want theoretically later. So I know I'm going to be extracting data. This first SC just means whatever channel I've selected. Well, that can get you in trouble. So we want, because if you accidentally select another one, it's going to pull data from something that you didn't want. We know that everything we're extracting in our data is going to be from channel 6, this new rectified value that we created. So let's change all of these to channel 6. Channel 6, channel 6, that's where it's pulling all the data from. Now this first one is our time within our experiment. It's good to keep so you can see the progression just as a safety check, but we're really not going to use it and it, de it depends on when you actually started recording with the participant versus when you started your presentation. So what, I, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to now create, I'm going to be selecting a period of time for my event and encapsulating my startle. This first value that I'm going to create is, or I'm going to collect, is my maximum value. So within what I have selected, what's the maximum value on channel 6? And then I'm going to take my minimum value. Now this is based on how we calculate startle. You take your maximum value within a window and you subtract your baseline. An easy way to do this is just to say within the window I have selected what's the smallest amount. Now if you, when you're doing your manual checks, if you see there's a lot of jagged movement 
in this baseline area. So we've already induced a startle. Now it takes a while for the body to actually respond, which is why we're seeing this flat line before the reflex happens. We can use this as our relative baseline because we know it's not physically possible for someone to actually make a response from the startle probe within this fraction of a millisecond. So we're going to say within our window here, giving the minimum. Now we're going to create a new channel, or I'm sorry, uh, an additional calculation, and we're going to do calculate. Now this can be a little confusing because it's you have to say what's the source one? What are we doing to what? Source one we want to be our maximum, which is column two. So you just have to say column two. It's a little confusing because it doesn't tell you that the values are columns. But this is column two, this would be column three. So we're going to say row A column two minus column three. That's basically saying give me my largest value within my window, subtract my smallest value, which is in my baseline. And we're not going to add a constant, and we're going to click OK. Now we can see that it's automatically taking this, subtracting this, which is our baseline, and giving us a relative startle value. Now we have one left over here, and this is, we could say none, we don't want any information. In fact, we're going to do that. Now what we're going to do is we can pre-program to say within my window, give me just my measurements, which I just set up so everything's ready. Okay, I've created my marker, and now we're going to extract the data. We've already set up our calculations here. Minimum, we'll get the maximum minimum, calculate, and while off screen I created a delta T which is just telling me how much I have selected. I actually don't need that right now, so we put it to none. It's going to stay consistent. Now what I have to do is I'm going to say find cycle again. But this time we're going to adjust it to no longer look for peaks because we've created events where we want them to be. So we're going to say look for events. You can just say reset offset to zero here. Now we're going to look for the events we created were stimulus delivery events. So we're going to change this to stimulus delivery. We laid down our events on the startle probe channel. So we're also going to put that on startle probe. Now that's the starting of the event. We did the ending of the event, stimulus delivery, or we're, we're going to define the ending of the event, stimulus delivery channel 29, and we're going to say look for pairs only with this start end, start end. Now what do we want to select? Once we've started our event, we don't want to go forward or back in time, we're just going to say this is where my window starts. When we look at the right edge of the selection that we're going to be copying our data from, we're going to put this at 0.15, so 150 milliseconds. And what this is going to do, you might not be able to see this in the preview, but the average startle, and I've gone through and I've seen from my event what time period is, is sufficient to be capturing all startle values. And at 150 milliseconds, I'm seeing with my data, it's selecting everything, so we're good. Starting at event 0, left edge, right edge, 0 0.150 seconds or 150 milliseconds. We're going to move the cursor to the origin, that just means back to the beginning. We're going to change our output. It's okay if we have this in our uh, journal, but I'm also going to tell it to create a temporary file that uh, is in Excel, so we can see it very quickly. Let's make sure we don't have events already uh, selected again because we don't want to create another event. And yep, it's already set up for that, so I'm going to uncheck it. And this tab that we were just at, the measurements, and saying put it in an Excel, it's basically going to be looking for that window that we've created relative to our event that we created and taking the measurements that we've already set up up here. So everything is set up to grab all the data based on the calculations we set up here. Now what we have left to do is click find all cycles and this should dump it into an Excel. So let's see if this works. OK, 
Okay, now I can scroll down to my journal and I can see that 57 cycles were found. This is one less than I was anticipating, which I've already figured out what the glitch is. Um, for sake of parsimony, I'll just say that however I have the setup, it's not collecting the very, very last startle probe. So I'm going to manually collect it, but I've gathered 57 um, automatically, which is saving me a ton of time. And that's my last startle probe. I can see where the startle occurred. I want to make sure that I'm selecting exactly 150 milliseconds, which is what I did for everything else. So I'm going to change this last bit of information to delta T. I'm going to go manually right to where my last event was created. Let me pull up and make sure I'm at the very last one. Yep, looks like I'm on the very last one. And I'm going to select to 150 milliseconds. I selected a little bit more than I wanted, but honestly, with the resolution we're working with, it's not going to make a difference. All right. And once I have it selected, I can actually go up to my measurements. I can right click on them and say copy to clipboard. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Excel sheet. I'm just going to right click on this last one, paste as text, and you can see we now have 59 lines with the first line being the titles. So we have a total of 58 trials, which is exactly what we need. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my orders, my trial orders. I know my participant I'm working with had order number one. I'm going to copy the trial numbers and the categories for each trial, and you can see we have 58. And we're going to come back over to our data, and we're going to paste this right next to all of our data. And now we're able to tell what type of category they were shown per trial. And in the next video I'm going to show you how to start to do the statistical analysis with averaging the different trial categories.